Today is all about autofocus. I'm gonna talk about how I use my Nikon Z cameras, the Z6, the Z7, the Z50, to photograph moving subjects and action. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's Approach in the Scene. I wanna thank everybody who's been liking and subscribing to the channel. It's just really, really fun to watch it grow and I wanna just reach out and thank everyone who's been supporting it. So, you know, I've always said that this show, Approaching the Scene, this, this channel is really sort of all about a conversation about photography. And since I did my, my one year usage review of the Nikon Z6, Z7, I've had a ton of questions about autofocus and about the firmware update and about how I use them to capture moving subjects, sports, action, wildlife. And I think that that's kind of to be expected because these cameras are significantly different with the way that they autofocus than traditional DSLRs. So a lot of us are moving from the DSLR realm into the mirrorless realm with these cameras. And I think you have to think about it just a little bit differently. And, and I've had to kind of adapt the way that I shoot and I'll say that in the original way that they were released, it was a little disappointing the way that they tracked moving subjects, but after some firmware updates and after handling them for a while and using them a little bit, I think that just kind of adapting technique and using the, some of the new firmware uh, potential in this camera really does some amazing autofocus things. And there's ways that it autofocuses even better than the DSLRs that we've been using. So the, the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna jump in and take a look through some of the menus and go through some of the settings that I think you should check out when you're, uh, when you're setting up your camera. So before we even talk about whether we're in AFC, AFS, what area mode we're in, uh, I'm gonna go into sort of the custom settings menu. You can see that you know we've got these main menus on the left side of the menu screen in Nikon land. Uh, and I'm often here in my menu, which is a, a, a place where you can just store different things from all of the different menus that you want easy access to all the time. Well, I'm gonna run up into the custom settings menu. That's that kind of pencil icon, has been in Nikon cameras since I can remember. Uh, and I'm gonna go into the autofocus settings. And when I go into autofocus, I wanna take a look at, at these different settings. And I'm just gonna run through my settings. Now, I have a whole video on how to set up the Nikon Z6 and Z7 and I will link that in the description uh, with all of my links to everything that I use, all my gear and everything. So I'll put that in the video description. If you just scroll down and show more, uh, you'll see the link to that video about how to set up your camera. Some of the custom controls I have, I won't go into detail about how to set those up. I'm just gonna show you autofocus settings, but if I reference something, I'll talk about that video, which, which you can link to. So it has AFC priority selection. That's when you're in autofocus continuous mode. Those are the modes for tracking action. That's a, a moving subject, continuously shifting autofocus. Uh, and, and you've got a choice of whether you want it to be a priority in having perfect focus or a priority on hitting the shutter when you want to hit the shutter. Well, I select hitting the shutter, capturing that decisive moment, whether I'm perfectly focused or not. When I'm focusing on moving subjects, when I'm in AFS mode, autofocus static mode, shooting a still subject, a subject that's not moving, a landscape, a portrait, something where you know it's not moving around. I'm not trying to track something that's complicated. I want a focus, I want, I want the camera to make sure it's in perfect focus before it enables release of the shutter. So it's more important that the focus is perfect. So in that mode here, I've got focus chosen. You can see the, the choice is focus or release, and I want focus there. Uh, focus tracking with lock-on. What this is is a kind of a delay. If you're tracking something and you've got a lock on that and it moves behind a post as you're tracking it, you know, how long does the camera wait after it's lost the subject before it stops looking for it and shifts looking for something different? You know, how, how, how much time can it be interrupted by something that's moving past another player on the field, it's moving past a post, it's the animal's going behind a tree. And I tend to like it slightly off center. I like it at about four, a little more delayed before it loses that subject. It continues to kind of track, expecting to pick it up on the other side. Um, so that's where I like to keep that. Auto focus area, so auto area, auto focus for face and eye detection. That's when you're in the auto area autofocus mode. This is a kind of a magic mode that I'm gonna talk a lot about. And, and I like to keep this set to have face and eye detection on. 
That way it's going to, to, if it sees a person come into the scene, and I've seen it happen with animals, even seagulls, different birds, uh, if it picks up a set of eyes and a nose, it's going to go after that face. And if there's an obvious eye in the scene, it's going to jump to the eye. And you can choose which face or which eye you want to move by just moving your, your D-pad. You can just hit left and right. There's a little arrow. And you can flip from eye to eye to eye and choose which one you want the focus to be on. And it'll just track it. Uh, so I like to keep it on face and eye detection. Often I am photographing people, my kids, whatever. If it can recognize a face or an eye, Boom. That's, that's what you generally want in focus. And I can always override that. I'll show you how. So focus points used. This is my Nikon Z7. I've got my 50 millimeter 1.8 on it. And it has so many autofocus points. I think there's 400 points covering the whole sensor. Uh, I like to only use a half of them so I can navigate through them quickly. I have to have less presses of my little digital joystick to move around between them. So I, you can choose to have all of them or half. With my Z6, there's about half as many points. I'm happy with that. With my Z7, I like to keep it set at a half. Store points by orientation. What's that all about? Well, when you have that turned on, which I like to, let's say you've chosen to have your lock on point or that point that you're, that you're using as your active autofocus point down in the bottom left side. Well, now suddenly you go vertical that would shift to the bottom right, correct? You know, if you, if you bring your hand up like this. Well, instead, if you've, if you've set it to the bottom left while you're in vertical mode, it'll just, it'll remember where you last were when you were holding your camera vertical. It'll remember where you last were when you're holding it horizontal. So as you're shifting your composition, it'll move the point to where you last had it in that camera orientation. I love that. Uh, AF active activation. I want this off and I really, I really, really recommend for those of you that have this on, this is where autofocus is on the shutter or not. And, and I just say get it off the shutter. You've got a button back here that your thumb naturally rests on that you can choose to autofocus. Um, and, and, and really, there's so many situations where I want to autofocus and then I want to stop autofocusing, recompose, shoot, and I, I don't want the shutter to trigger that autofocusing mechanism. I want to control that with my thumb, shooting with my finger. They're two separate functions, and I think it opens up a whole world of creative possibility if you decouple uh, the two things. So, so I like that turned off, so AF on only. Uh, limit area autofocus area mode selection that's just if you don't want all of the different autofocus options i do turn a bunch of these off i'm not i have them turned on right now so that you can see them as i scroll through i mean that that's about saying i don't want to see some of these when i'm looking through my options uh, and then focus point wrap around that's for if you're on the right side and you want to jump to the left you just keep scrolling to the right i find that kind of messes me up uh, some, it's, it's like having the cursor automatically move from the right to the left as it's scrolling through text. Some of you may love that. For me, it doesn't really work so well. Uh, focus point options, manual focus, there, there's dynamic, I, I leave both of these options on. Low light autofocus, this is another one of those things that came with the firmware update. It's incredible. I can be out in a really low lit situation and if I'm in AFS, only in the, the static situation like a landscape or a portrait like we've talked about, not a moving subject, and I've got a single autofocus point which could also be that little tiny uh, fine autofocus point and I go to, to autofocus and it's in low light Everything will slow down a little bit. The screen will get way brighter, but in this really amazing smooth way, it'll find a contrast edge if you put that autofocus point over it and focus like almost completely in the dark. I have focused planets in Milky Way shoots and gotten the stars razor sharp, just nailed infinity, uh, which, is a, which is just <laughs> nothing short of amazing. I mean, in situations where I could have never autofocused without turning on a flashlight, and, and getting something, I mean, it, it autofocuses nearly in the dark. It's quite incredible. So I mean, sometimes I, I can't even see to tell whether it's autofocused, but the point went green. I take a shot, zoom in, I'm like, wow, it's perfect. Um, really quite amazing. And then built-in auto AF illuminator, that's something you can choose to turn on or off whether you want to be uh, bothering people with the little autofocus illuminator or not. You know, it's just totally situationally dependent. So those are the menu settings that I would recommend. Now I want to talk a little bit about some of the modes that you're going to use when you're out photographing. All right, so we've talked about how to set up your custom settings menu 
And now I want to go in and take a look at the different modes, both the basic modes of autofocus, whether you're photographing static subjects, whether you're photographing moving subjects, or whether you're manually focusing your camera. So there's three separate modes for that. Uh, and then the different area autofocus modes. And we'll talk about moving subjects first, and then we'll talk a little bit about static subjects, and then I'll show you a trick to kind of fine tune using manual focus and focus peaking, even though you're in static autofocus mode. So let's talk about those modes first. And, and I just want to remind you, I've got a link to all of my different ways to set up the Nikon Z6 and Z7. Uh, and, and one of the things that I have in that menu is that when I'm in stills mode, when I'm not shooting video, the video button is by default set to do nothing. And I, I have changed that to where you can see here that when I press it, the AFC and that little square icon in the top middle of my viewfinder go yellow. And with my back dial, I can change which major mode, autofocus single servo, autofocus continuous, or manual focus. And with that front dial, I can change which area mode. We'll talk about those settings in just a second. So once you learn what those settings are, I, I've got it set to just be really quick and easy with my command dials and holding down that video button. Uh, so I don't even have to look away from the viewfinder or look up from the, from the LCD or go into the quick setting menu. We're gonna go into the eye menu. Um, that's where, and I talk about how to customize this menu in that setup video that's linked in the video description here. But I've got it set to, to change my major autofocus modes between those three modes right down in the bottom right. And so if I go ahead and hit OK here, it pulls up whether you're in AFS, that's autofocus single servo. Think about that for static, static subjects. I always think S for static. So you're shooting a portrait and your subject's not moving. You're photographing a landscape and the landscape's not running around needing to be tracked. Uh, those are those modes where your subject is standing still, you're not moving, so the distance from the camera to the subject isn't moving, so it's a still subject. That's what that mode is for. Autofocus continuous, that's for a continuously moving subject. The distance between the camera and the subject is moving, so that autofocus needs to continue, continuously be tracking and adjusting for differences between the distance between the camera and the subject. And then manual focus. So those are the three modes, and we'll focus on AFC, that continuous autofocus for, for moving subjects first. So I'm gonna jump in there, and we have different modes. Whether we're in autofocus single servo for static subjects or whether in autofocus continuous, most of them are the same, the autofocus area modes, that's how the autofocus points are, are behaving, how you're acquiring your subject, how you expect your camera to interact with your subject and keep it in focus or get it in focus. Uh, and so we'll talk about that here for just a quick second. Uh, and, and I want you to remember that I think kind of the magic mode with the Z6 and Z7 is something you don't have with the DSLRs. That's that auto area autofocus. Now, I, I misspoke when I did my one-year review of these cameras. I called it the AFF mode, but it's auto area autofocus. In video, it's called the AFF mode, and it's kind of magical in video. It's what I used to, to, photo, to film these, these training videos where I'm just talking to the camera. It keeps my face in focus automatically all the time. In still mode, it's called auto area autofocus mode, and it's where that face detection and eye detection activates. If it sees a face, if it sees an eye, it'll give you the option to just start tracking that and switch between different faces and eyes just by using your joystick or D-pad. Uh, it'll have a little arrow you can flip from one to another to another and then track and keep that eye or that face autofocus. I find that works really well with wildlife too. I was really shocked the first time that I was using firmware, the firmware version that that came out in and was version, firmware version two. And all of a sudden it was noticing that a seagull had eyes and tracking the seagull's eyes while I was <laughs> photographing the seagull. And I've seen that with lots of different animals. So it's a really handy feature and it's only active in the auto area autofocus. And it's also the mode I like to use almost exclusively when I'm photographing moving subjects. Now I'll show you what the other ones are. There's a wide area autofocus mode. That's just like choosing that you want to track moving subjects within this kind of wider autofocus area. There, there's a, there's another, there's a couple of those different ones. There's a single point autofocus, which I think is, is generally kind of a bad way to use uh, AFC mode. It's just picking a single autofocus point and you have to be on that point. Whatever's on that point, it's gonna track the, the motion of. I mean, maybe there's a situation for it, but in general, I think that that's, that's a tricky one to get working right. And I don't think it, I think it works even less well with the mirrorless world with the contact contrast detection. 
Now, the mode that we use a lot, and I will focus on for a second, uh, in the DSLR world is dynamic area autofocus. And what that is, is I select a point, and then the camera hands that point off to the other points around it in case I can't keep my subject tracked in that. And when we work as still photographers using Nikon's mirror, older DSLRs, whether it's you know the Nikon D500 or any of the DSLRs over the past long, long number of years, that that dynamic mode where it's it's handing the autofocus points off to the points around it works really really well in the DSLR world. I find it's working better with firmware version two with the Z6 and Z7, but it's still a little harder to track subjects with it. I mean, the way that it works, I'm going to use my my boy Pike's favorite toy, his little red train engine here, and once it captures that subject, you know, I can I can move around. I can move the camera and it, it's pretty much gonna, gonna keep it as long as in, in that area, as long as it's touching one of those points. I find it loses the subject more than I would like in that mode. It's still, you know, you can play around with it, find how it works for you. I, I, I originally thought it was a bit disappointing and I still haven't been particularly pleased with it. What I love is this mode, uh, we'll go into the eye menu again because it's just easier to see what I'm choosing. Uh, and I'll go into that auto area, autofocus mode. And when you look at that, you just get these big kind of kind of red marks in the corners of the frame. And the camera's making all the decisions. Now you have an option to turn on autofocus tracking and pick an area to start tracking and it'll hand it off all over the screen. And it's, it's pretty amazing for slower moving subjects uh, or for subjects where you can pretty easily identify where they're going to be coming into the scene and track them and keep them in the frame. For fast moving erratic subjects that pop up and suddenly there they are, you know, a bird in flight or race cars coming around the track or sports in action where you're, you're tracking a group of players on the field and you're using a long lens and they're kind of filling the frame and suddenly, pop, you want to get them. I find it's a little bit trickier uh, to, to take the time to lock in a point and say, well, this is the, the thing that I'm tracking. Now, it may be the case if you've got a bunch of different players and you want to focus on one player that you're still going to want to use the tracking mode I'm about to show you. Uh, but in general, for things particularly like birds in flight, uh, for photographing my kids on amusement rides that are moving really fast, I'm using a long lens, filling the frame with them, they're whizzing by. What happens in this mode is if there's a subject that's moving quickly, and my camera is moving quickly, tracking it. It recognizes what that subject is, and it's really good at picking, you know, a face or whatever part of the subject that it should be focused on, and just tracking it. I've had really great luck with birds in flight, where I'm almost filling the frame and I'm moving really fast. The subject's moving at the same speed. I don't even pick a point. I don't even choose any lock on. I just hit the AF on button in this a autofocus auto area mode and it just tracks and it does a nice job. So I'd really suggest if you've got fast moving, erratically moving subjects, the kind of thing that you would use group autofocus for with the DSLRs, try this auto area autofocus mode and just track your subjects with it. So, you know, for it, it, it's tough for me to demonstrate in the studio, but I'll show you some images that I've gotten of birds and of my kids on amusement park rides and of my kids running towards me uh, down on my mom's farm where it's just, just bam, 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 bam. They're just lined up perfectly uh, and, they're, and they're, it's keeping it tracked and it doesn't lose focus the same way that I find it does in dynamic uh, single point selection mode. So I find it to be kind of magic. And then the only problem is when you've got a subject like a penguin colony. I was photographing penguins in Patagonia a few years back. And, and you want to just track one of the group of penguins. Well, in that case, this mode where they're, they're not moving very quickly, penguins aren't very fast on land, but they are moving around. The distance from you to the subject's changing. If you're using a long lens, there's multiple subjects in the frame. Well, you can't trust autofocus area to just automatically select that particular penguin or you know the front of the car that's coming at you. So what you can do in that case is you hit the OK button. And when you do that, you've got a selectable point. Let's say you're photographing race cars and you know they're going to be coming in on the left side of the frame. Well, you can set that over there and the minute that the race car comes into the frame, bam, you hit your autofocus point. And if you look, as I move around, as that's moving around, 
it just keeps that point locked on. And on that portion of Pike's train, it's, it's a way of keeping that subject you've selected track. So you set up and you've got penguins walking around in their colony. Well, you know, pick the one you want, select it, bam. If you want to change your selection, you can hit OK again. It goes back to a blank frame to reselect. If you want to get rid of that tracking point, all you have to do is hit the, uh, the zoom out button, that bottom left button on the Nikon Z6 or Z7 that's right next to the screen at the bottom of the camera. And you're back to that just auto area mode to say track birds in flight. Now all of a sudden you've got albatross flying overhead and you want to capture those uh, with a long lens. So that's my suggestion. I really think that this auto area autofocus mode is brilliant for photographing action and sports. It just takes a little getting used to. Uh, again, you're probably going to want to go into your drive mode uh, if you're doing the birds in flight kind of thing and select, you know, high speed continuous or high speed continuous extended uh, and just lay down on the shutter. Remember, your buffer isn't quite as big as it is on, say, a D500 or a D5. So you want to fire off, you know, six, seven round bursts so that you have some in reserve. You know, I see it, I find it hits the end of the buffer at, you know, 15, 20 frames. Um, the Z6 is a little bit better. All right, so that's that. Now I want to talk, like I promised, just briefly about some tricks with, with, um, with static autofocus. So when I talk about static autofocus, we're going to go back into that eye menu. You know, again, I, I have that keyed in on my, my movie record button, but it just shows little icons. You have to learn what those icons mean. We're going to go down here and we're going to flip from AFC to AFS. And I want to just look quickly through the modes. You have one additional one here. You have the pinpoint. And in this case, I think the single point is really amazing. Um, the only reason I would use auto area autofocus when I'm shooting a static subject is to use eye detect for shooting a portrait uh, in, in a kind of a, a setting where the camera's on the tripod, the subject's looking at me, I'm having an interaction, I put eye detect on there, bam, 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 you know, maybe I'm firing with a remote control uh, and autofocus is turned on, so it's going to autofocus every time and it's just going to track that eye and I can pick which eye. Uh, really, really handy. Otherwise, I would ignore all of these modes except single point autofocus and pinpoint autofocus. And I just love pinpoint autofocus. It's a tiny, tiny little pinpoint. And, and when you go in and hit green, you know it's locked. It's locked on just the front leading edge of that train. I'm shooting this at, one, or I have this set at 1.8 aperture, so it's really showing us some depth of field. If I want the back edge of the train, boom, you can see I can really pinpoint where I'm at in a way that I can't with a DSLR. And if I want to just make sure that I've got it nailed, I have my OK button programmed that in every mode except that auto area autofocus mode where the OK button activates the tracking point. If I hit OK, it zooms in on my chosen point to 100%. And here's one of the cool things in AFS mode, in the, in the single servo mode. If I hold down my, um, if I hold down my autofocus button and I start doing some manual focusing, I'll get focus peaking. See the focus peaking on the edge of the train there? It, it, I have it set to be really low, but you'll see focus peaking pop up around the front of the cattle guard there. As I get in focus, if I can get it in focus. You'll see just a bit of focus peaking popping up there. Woo, just to let me know I'm in sharp focus. Pretty cool stuff. So that's just by holding down that autofocus button. Let me back up a little bit, get a little more of the train. Well, it, it's going to show up even more if I'm not zoomed into 100%. So there you see the peaking playing across the train. When you're zoomed into 100%, you almost don't need peaking. But it's kind of a little trick. You know, you can pop in and just by hitting that OK button. If you're on the tripod, it's not moving around like it is handheld with a 46 megapixel sensor zooming into 100%. But that's the kind of thing that mirrorless gets you. You can do that through the viewfinder, which is just amazing. So, um, so that's a cool little trick. I also love the fact that in this mode, in the pinpoint autofocus, which I'll go in here and show you again, that's pinpoint. This is single point. Single point's just a little bit bigger if you don't want to use that pinpoint. Um, when you have those two modes selected, you can point at a really, really dark part of your scene. I told you I've been able to focus planets when I'm out photographing the Milky Way. 
well, you know, let's see, I point over here into this darker room in my kitchen. It's really dark over there, but the camera's kind of magnifying it uh, using just boosting ISO to get me a brighter view. It's, it's so dark I can barely see with my eyes, especially backlit here in the studio setting. But, you know, let's say I pick it, a point back there. Well, with my low light autofocus turned on, especially in pinpoint mode, let's get into pinpoint mode. I can go in there and pick a little contrast point and it just, it'll nail it. And if you want to know, did it really get it? Yes, it did. That is razor sharp and in focus. So some pretty cool stuff. Uh, and I think, you know, knowing that difference between AFC and AFS, and then you got to find a contrast edge. Boom. Once it nails it, bam. Um, and the other thing about the autofocus with these cameras is they're just extremely accurate. Um, the DSLRs, the way that they autofocus is by sending a, a sort of a, 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 it's kind of a range finder signal out, determining the distance between the subject that the focus point is on optically and the camera through one system and then adjusting the lens to be focused at that distance through the lenses motor and autofocus system. And so, you know, it's got to be perfectly calibrated between the lens and the, auto, auto, the optical autofocus system of the camera. They're kind of two different systems. The way that the mirrorless camera autofocuses is right with the contrast lines that the sensor's seeing through the lens. So it's actually focusing the image that the sensor sees. And now that that's getting faster and faster, it's also more and more accurate. So when I do things like lens calibrations, I find that with my DSLRs, they need a whole bunch of calibrations. Maybe they'll need eight points of lens calibration. The same lens on the Z6 and Z7 are so close, maybe they need one point of lens correction in the camera settings. They just are more accurate autofocus systems. So again, you know, I'm, I'm showing you the way that I use the Z6 and Z7 to photograph sports in action. You know, if I'm in a situation where I'm out photographing birds in flight or, you know, competition kiteboarding or backcountry skiing for a magazine article for a professional or for, for a commercial client or something, sports and action is the focus, I'm probably still going to take my Nikon D500 for a couple of reasons. One, it's got the crop sensor, so my longer lenses have more reach with it. Uh, and typically when I'm photographing sports and action and motion, birds, wildlife, the longer lens, having even more reach with that longer lens. That's why we carry teleconverters and big long lenses for those kinds of things. Having a smaller sensor that still is high megapixel and great in, in high ISO like the Nikon D500 is a real benefit. And then there's that 200 frame buffer at 10 frames per second. This Z7 will fire at 10 frames a second. I think it even does a little bit more, maybe, maybe 11. Uh, with, with full and compressed RAW files. The Z6 does even better than that with 12 or 13, depending on your settings. But the buffer isn't 200 deep. With the, with the D500, you can just like a machine gun forever, it seems, and you don't hit the end of the buffer. So I'm hoping that they'll build a camera that does that. I'm also really used to the group autofocus and the dynamic autofocus with the D500. Um, there are things that are better about both platforms. But you know, if I'm going on a big trip and I need to carry lighter weight and I, and I really enjoy the F4 lenses and the 1.8 lenses that are with this camera and a, the ability to adapt any of my old Nikon lenses via the FTZ adapter, I find this autofocus is just fine. Um, the key is that auto area autofocus mode. So play around with that if you got a Z camera. Tell me what your results are. Hit me up in the comments. Tell me if you think I'm full of crap and it's not working for you. Let's have a conversation about it. For me, not picking a point at all for erratic fast moving motion works great. Picking that tracking uh, point locking on with the inner button and the autofocus on button works like a charm too. Again, I think all this stuff is really dependent on getting your focus off the shutter button. So go through those settings. And I've got the setup video linked in this video's description. So thanks so much, everybody. Uh, I hope everyone's having a wonderful holiday season. I know my kids are just going crazy. We've got the tree up. There's candy canes. They're in a sugar high. Uh, it's all cookies and when the presents coming and when's grandma going to get here. And it's a ton of fun, uh, the holidays with little ones. And I hope everyone's enjoying family, good food, and fun. And we'll see you next week.